Hey guys, I had a friend come over last night asking me about medicinal herbs and I thought maybe I would start going through the collection that I have of herb identification and use books. My first one, even though it didn't have the answer for her in it because her answer was self-heal, she has um, canker sores. If you have canker sores, you can make a mouthwash um, that you can use for the canker sores and it's supposed to do a really good job of healing things up. You can also take it internally. I have the seeds for it and I planted it before, but again, I didn't label anything because I just don't label things. It's just life is such an adventure when you're hoping that you're not poisoning yourself as opposed to healing yourself. It just puts that little zip in your day. Anyway, so my first book, I got this from my mom and I remember having it in our house a lot when I was a kid from the shepherd's purse. And isn't it pretty? It has all these fun medicinal equipment on the picture. And it is by Max G. Barlow, B-A-R-L-O-W. And the reason that I like this book is because it has drawn pictures, verbal explanations, um, and my favorite part is that it shows the months of the year and the locations in the, in the country where they would be most likely to be found. So this is Plantago, and it is found all over the United States, and the seasons that it should be used are in, ah, if I can find it, these boxes. And then this, at the bottom, these colorful boxes, explain to you how to use it, what that plant is good for. And it just takes all of the confusion out of looking on your own property for medicinals. Um, the other thing is it lists all the different names of the plant. So for, for Plantago, it's Cuckoo's Beard, or sorry, Cuckoo's Bread, Way Bread, Englishman's Foot, Rat Tail, Chimney Sweep, Bird Seed, Devil Shoestring, Rib Grass, White Man's Foot, and Snake Weed. And then it has rose hips, and it shows that you should harvest them September through November between the hours of 8 o'clock. Let's see between the hours of 8 o'clock in the morning and 5 o'clock at night. Isn't that fun? That's with that little clocky looking... This. this shows what hours you should be harvesting it. And then it has uh, counterindications about how to prepare it. Like on this one, avoid the use of aluminum cookery when you are preparing your rose hips. And then it has Oregon grape, uh, Harvest it between the hours of 9 o'clock in the morning and 5 o'clock at night, and you can harvest it all throughout the year, and it's on the, it does not grow in the Midwest. It grows in the far west, and it grows in the east, up to the Missouri River. And it shows parts used in this box. This box, sorry, is shows a picture of what parts you use. Um, anyway, like tansy, all over the United States you use the whole thing and it's used to expel worms such as pinworms. It aids in painful menstruation and it is an insect repellent. So the way that these boxes work is the green ones are for internal use, the pink ones are for external use. Isn't that? I just think they put this book together so well. And it, it's not hugely comprehensive. What it is, is um, it takes common plants that you see all the time and explains how to use them. And then it has a section separate for how to make ointments. So instead of wasting space on an individual page, they just have on it, you use it for ointments, and then they direct you to what, the page that explains how to use ointments, which is really nice. And so they have them set up into sections. They have yellow dock, bearberry, gravel root, chickweed, and chamomile all together. 
and it's five botanicals tincture and fluid extraction preparation so they put all the plants together that need to be prepared in the same way oh did I not show you sorry I don't know what you can see because now my head is behind the book it has this pretty picture on the back of this pretty lady sitting on a, a rock under the ocean anyway there's that. I have other books that I like that are for herbal, but this is the first one I go to just because it's so definite and it's so simple. Um, preparation for drawing sal salves. Um, they have these little plant identification tags you can make a copy of and clip out and then tape onto your jar. really fabulous and then it goes through a list of plants that contain certain elements uh, where to find nitrilocytes uh, where to find botanical pangamic acid which is B15 um, pen, pangamic acid, the uses, weights and measurements, and then a glossary. So, there we go. And it, it, the publisher is, um, where is my publisher? Hmm. Well, in the back it had that. Let's see if we can find it. Um, Spice West Public Publications is who printed this. And it's in Pocatello, Idaho. So pretty close to us. I wonder if it's just a local thing, but I swear I've seen these in other places. Maybe that's why I love it so much is because it's actually identifying plants that are really close to us. Although some of them aren't. Uh, Oregon grape is not native to our area. It is in Oregon, not Idaho. I think we're a little too dry, a little too cold. So I have other books, of course, always be careful when you're identifying, make sure that you know which plant you're actually going to be using and test it on your arm before you ever ingest it and always ingest it yourself before you have your children ingest it. Always, always, always. Um, because you're able to identify distress much faster than a child would be able to explain where they hurt and children are smaller so they're more sensitive to smaller amounts so yeah don't use your kids as a guinea pig and i hope you guys have a lovely day we'll talk to you later